Hello everyone, and welcome back to my transgalactic trek in Elite Dangerous, where I'm continuing to attempt to cross the galaxy while exploring various systems that others have not explored before. And here we are in Blaithua, I'll just call it by the last four digits, so uh, E311. And we've taken care of this system quite well, so I'm moving on to the next target, which is actually E3-10, just uh, nearby, though I have to pick fastest routes to make sure we don't have to hit 100 systems along the way before getting there. That's the first target for this episode. We've got four targets, and that should cover the Blaithua system, or sector, if you will. And after that, I want to head to Smojue, S-M-O-J-U-E, and that'll be for the next episode. So here we go. Oh, there's a nice F-type star to start out with, and so I ping it. But unfortunately no new astronomical objects discovered here. It does have a companion though, a, a nice K-type star, and so I see if I can quickly hunt for that, otherwise I'd move on. I'm not going to take too much time, but turns out it's not very hard. As you can see, I scan the line, and there it is. Not very far away at all, and in fact it does have some planets around it, so pretty lucrative uh, little find there. I still have the system map issue in this episode, though I understand they have patched that, so that uh, that uh, little issue I had in the previous episode is fixed, but here you'll see me always going to the galaxy map in order to access the, the system map, otherwise it doesn't work immediately. Alright, so uh, pinging these planets and with this one I decide it will be convenient to swing by the star to do some fuel scooping rare case um, I do so show some fuel scooping in this episode fuel scooping. But in general I won't do too much of that anyway on to the real target which is a b-type star e3-11 Now generally the transit between stars takes about 10-15 seconds and this is this is an example of that uncut. Usually I cut them shorter for the sake of the video, but I'd say that's a pretty normal transit. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because during this episode I encountered much longer transit times and possibly because I was recording this on a Sunday and everything was busy, but some of the transit times between stars were more than a minute. And that was pretty striking and sort of colored. Oh dear. Uh, looks like E3 10 has already been discovered by various peoples. Uh, we have seen some of those names before. And so, yeah, well, that's, that put a damper on things quickly. I mean, after all, E3 11 had not been discovered, so I was hoping that we were free and clear of other explorers. But now it looks like, well, we'll see about our next target here, uh, E4-12, I'll call it. I, I don't know, uh, I think there would be sufficient variation if I just call it by the, by the last four digits four, there. Three, two, one, and so here we go, on our way. Uh, Red Dwarf. Nothing too spectacular. And so what's eventually going to happen is that with the really long delays between systems, I'm going to become less and less inclined to ping these. So yeah, M-class star and nothing too interesting around, so... But it's still analyzing the scan, note that. It uh, took a while, it eventually did it, but... Okay, well, this is another one of those stars that don't look particularly appetizing, but I am still okay with pinging it and looking for other targets around the place. And we do have four, but they're all asteroids. No luck. It said T Tori there. It didn't look like a T Tori star, but I guess it's a, actually lit up now. So it wasn't a red dwarf after all. This one, well, it could be a T-Tori as well, but probably a Red Dwarf. I 
Now here's the thing, uh, so I pinged that, but, and it said one new astronomical object discovered, but I think the new astronomical object there is actually the star, and I, did, I should have probably pinged an extra time. So I'm getting this weird delay, and again that's probably because of the busyness of trying to run the program on a Sunday, I guess. I don't know. Obviously I haven't had these problems before, otherwise I wouldn't make note of them. Okay, so a string of uninspired stars here. This one was quicker. And three new objects, so let's take a quick look at what those might be. Uh, no, that, that, that was the previous system. I have to go to system map like this. Ah, uh, just asteroids. Okay, anyway, onward. Wow. Well, like I've said before, the universe does seem to be filled with these red dwarfs, so... I don't even wait for the scan this time, and here you see me start to get impatient. So, well, I mean, heck, other explorers have uh, jumped ahead of me thanks to their... their focus and perhaps better equipment. So I gotta get going here. Well, this one I've already seen that's companion star off to the side there. So I'll probably give this a full checkup. Yep, two new objects right by it. And if we take a look, L T, not great stuff, but anyway. Well, we are close to our target, so I guess I do a little bit of delay of gratification anyway. And well, there's its first companion, and I I know we saw its second, its purple companion as well. It's over there. Okay, all done. So moving right along, let's continue on to the target. I always go down. I think I can scroll up, but I never do. One of those mental blocks. Okay, so what will this be? Uh, it's a little bit brighter looking. Anything interesting? Nope. Okay, well, it's got a companion. The companion... Right now we're only reading asteroids, but it could have other planets nearby. But I decided to head for our target since it's, a, it's the next stop, so... Okay, E4-12. Okay, nice blue-white star, B-type. The question we're all asking now is, has it been discovered before? That's the big thing. Now here, basic discovery scanner says no new astronomical objects discovered, but we still haven't discovered the big star right in front of us. It hasn't uh, identified it as an unknown entity. And I'm still waiting for that. I'm still waiting for it to pop up so I can do its scanning. And uh, here you see me waiting frustrated. And uh, yeah, so to head to the galaxy map, I can't click system map because we haven't gotten to that point yet. So just waiting around and so... Yeah, this is what I mean. This is... Uh, this was my experience while recording this episode and when I'm on the system map you can see the date so you know which date I was having this particular problem with but yeah just waiting trying to find out when this thing will recognize it's right in front of a star here it's a pretty obvious star I'm not entirely sure what I can do about it if it doesn't just pop up and say hey there's a star you can scan it doesn't seem like I have any recourse. I'm certainly not going to give this star a miss. 
Not when I don't even know whether the system has been discovered before. Okay, finally. Okay, well, I guess pulling further away helped? I don't know. I don't know if we could say that. But anyway, we, we got that, and so I start scanning it. And presumably I can go to the system map now? And it's been discovered before. It's been discovered before. Congratulations, uh, Lizo, it looks like. All right. Well, uh, nothing for me to do here. We're we're interested in finding new places, places where others have not gone, and so I head to E6-4, FR-N E6-4. Interesting. All the B-type stars seem to start with the E on the on the last four digits. At least uh, all the ones I listed for this in the next episode do. I wonder if that's a pattern. I, of course I haven't looked anything about the way they name the stars up. I haven't looked... oh, uh, I seem to be having another issue here where I can't quite click on it. Okay, well, no, it's okay. Probably not a glitch, probably just me. Okay, here we go, and this one was a long one. Okay, so, well, after that long trip, I was not inclined to hang around for scanning. So I just headed for my target. You can see I'm just passing by in order to get to the other side in order to make the jump. And on we go. Yeah, this star looks even worse. No surprise. The long jumps are making me inclined to head away, but I do some fuel scooping first. Fuel scooping. Okay, off to the next destination. At least we're covering some ground. Space. Okay. Well, do I want to hang out here? Not with the star just tempting me right there, so onward. Fuel scooping. Four, three, two, one, and Okay, being a little bit more selective now about the stars I look through. This one looks a little bit better. Alright, let's give it a chance. Okay, one object, and it's just a little world there. Looks like a good little world. Vaguely Mars-like, just going by the icon there. It's got sort of polar ice caps. So here we go, scanning it. And analyzing scan decides to take forever here. And you'll see that. I decide to include it in the video because we, while I'm waiting for it, I do a close flyby of the planet in question. Just waiting, waiting, getting closer, closer. You can see the polarized caps on the planet. Some clouds, I think. I don't think those are, uh, I think those are a cloud layer. Pretty substantial ice caps, actually. Still waiting for the analysis of the scan. Okay, parking it. We're not very far at all. Was that eleven thousand kilometers? That's that's pretty far actually. Probably around this thing. That's a geostationary. Well, depends on how it rotates and everything. Still waiting. So yeah, this definitely makes me less likely to attempt to scan planets now, unless they're in a particularly spectacular system, because if I'm going to wait this long... Okay, finally, high middle content planet. So yeah, well, this was a bit of trouble. Four, 
So ultimately, we covered a good amount of distance in this episode. We didn't do nearly as much actual exploring and discovering of planets thanks to the delay, and I quickly hopped from system to system. Because well, it's getting a little bit frustrating, honestly. We're obviously not, still not that far out. We're talking about 2,400 to 2,700. So maybe a 20th of the way into the galaxy. Still got a long way to go and clearly haven't really separated from the other explorers. So every incentive to do some quick system hopping. And well, this this one looks interesting. You can see the little series of lights in the upper left-hand corner there, and that looks very suggestive. So I don't even look at the system map. Uh, I just head towards those lights, knowing that they have to be something. So what sort of little mini system have we got here? Quick ping shows how many? Eight astronomical objects. Okay, well, it's time to get to work on those. Don't count on the scanning or uh, analyze data stuff to be quick. No, it's gonna take a while. Every one of these plants is gonna take a little bit of time. But it's an interesting system. It's got a nice gas giant there. And, well, a bunch of little icy moons. Really nothing too spectacular. But still. Still worthwhile. Okay. So next up is... Oh, well. I think we can give this one a pass, right? Do some fuel scooping first. Fuel scooping. Ah, oh, this one's worse. <sighs> okay, okay, get on with it. Okay, please let this one be good, please let this one be good. Ah, oh, well not the greatest star, but at least it has a nearby companion. That's sort of convenient. But the problem with nearby companion is that there's unlikely to be other planets too close by. At least, seems that way. There's a companion, but I see something else there. What do we have on the other side of this star? That's just a red dwarf. Other side of the star? Come on, get turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Aha! Uh, gas giant close to its star. And, you know, I've been on the hunt for these. One other thing I haven't found that I'm on the hunt for is neutron stars. I wonder how difficult it is to find those. Of course, black hole proved to be ridiculously hard to find. Neutron stars probably will be very difficult as well. Taking a look at this gas giant here. Uh, it has a period of 0.2 days there, so we're talking about five hours, uh, less, uh, well, somewhere around five hours. So it goes around its sun every five hours. It's pretty impressive. We we really didn't see much effect or interaction between the sun and that gas giant. Would have been interesting to see some vapor or something flowing out of the gas giant or something like that, I don't know. One side, well, I mean, I guess if it's uh, rotating about its axis, one side wouldn't get baked or anything, but probably at that distance it's like tidally locked, so maybe one side would get baked. Okay, this next star is our target. And 
indeed. A nice blue-white star. Uh, no O-type stars in this episode. Didn't find any on, on our route. But that is good. Uh, at this point, I think we're about 2,700 light-years into the galaxy. Okay, it's got a B-type companion as well, so that's good. This is just a planet. Metal-rich planet, though, so it could be very good to exploit such a planet. But now I have to find the companion star. The brightest star seems to be that little blue dot that's next to the main star. But... It's not entirely clear because if you take a look at it, that star isn't substantially brighter than the other stars around. You can see other stars to the right there that are pretty bright as well. Anyway, I head for that one. And at first it seems like my speed is going down. You can see there, which suggests that there's some gravitating body somewhere near here. But then my speed starts to pick up up again 113 114 and now I'm confused but I still head for this star I try to see if there's if it's uh, part of the background or not by deviating my my approach see if it moves with respect to the background can't quite make that out but it could be just because it's really far away in the end though once I'm getting Pass a thousand times the speed of light and 300,000 light seconds away from the central star, I figure I'm not going in the right direction at all. So uh, taking a look back at the central star and its orbit, sort of see it has a orbit like that. It's, it's, uh, it could be going around something. It could be, but I don't, I didn't really see anything there. Uh, could be that there's something really far out that it's just wobbling in respect to, but it's tough to find anything. I spent some time trying to find stuff that moves with respect to the background, but couldn't find anything. And so next target, which happens to be fairly close by, is the E6-5 star in this sector. So unfortunately, couldn't get the second star in this system head on to our final target for this episode. Alright, another B-type. Uh, okay, alright, at least it uh, gave us the one new astronomical object discovered before I finished the basic discovery scan. Probably the basic discovery scan won't work properly unless you've discovered the center star first. Anyway, so this star at least has not been discovered before. It looks like it's all clear, so I'm gonna take my time with this. It's got three planets really close by, but a whole series of t tauri type stars that could have planets around them. So plenty of fertile grounds for that. So I'll park it here for this episode, and I'll come back to you in the next episode with the exploration of this system, and then we'll move on to the Smojue uh, sector and see how much ground we can cover there. I'm aiming for about uh, well, at least getting th into 3,000 light years, hopefully aiming for 4,000. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.